All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, so we're going to be going over the new home buyers roadmap. 79 must know tips for first time home buyers and investors. Uh, so I wanted to cover a few chapters and basically show exactly what's in this book uh, that I created and um, what it basically is is uh we've been doing inspections for the past 20 years or so and there are a lot of common uh commonalities between the inspections uh we hear a lot from first time home buyers or from people who just aren't savvy in the home buying process or investors who are kind of new to the game why didn't my inspector catch this uh, we hear that so much, and I thought that it would be advantageous for, since we have firsthand knowledge of all the different issues that people call us out for, that they encounter, even things that are outside of the scope of what we handle. Um, but since we're knowledgeable about properties, then I'll notice a lot of times that uh, people will look to us as a resource for information. And uh, basically, I just wanted to convey what, you know, what we see on a normal basis. Um, so as you can see here, um, I'm a seasoned entrepreneur, owner of Moisture Master Pros, which is a Pennsylvania and Miami based company we handle water-based inspections so effectively we find out how water is getting into properties and uh, we provide a repair plan for those customers uh, who require it um, we use different types of technology we perform drone inspections uh, we also perform thermal imaging inspections which is a large part of our business um, we inspect, you know, everything from structural issues, foundation issues, roof issues, exterior substrate, which is any kind of wall or, you know, any way water can get in. Um, so our background, my background is in general. Uh, I'm a general contractor by trade, and uh, we started focusing more on actual water intrusion so um, i got into this because we were doing high-end basement renovations high-end home renovations where customers were spending 80 to a hundred thousand dollars on our services and then we would get calls back later on um you know like maybe they're getting water in or they're having some type of issues with mold and it started happening so frequently that it was kind of like we need to take additional measures to protect them before we do this work. That led me down a path of education where I came to find the trade of water infiltration um, in a specialist capacity. And uh, we started doing being proactive before we would renovate your basement. Then we had to include sealing up your foundation checking the exterior for cracks, um, checking the levels of moisture just to make sure that you're not making this high level investment with us. And even though we're not responsible for that portion, you're stuck with, you know, some type of issues after the fact. So basically from there, um, you know, we've kind of honed in on just performing water infiltration uh, issues and sticking to that, <coughs> excuse me, and um, kind of staying away from the general construction side of things. So we've actually become specialists in water infiltration as a company. Um, you can see by the table of contents here that it covers the entire gambit that you would encounter in a home. It actually plans for other things, you know, besides the actual, um, you know, initial inspections, what to expect moving in, living in the property. 
Uh, you see things here as we get towards the back of the table of contents, income and expense analysis, um, financing, um, appreciation and resale, poten resale potential, real estate market conditions. So it covers all the basics that you would expect uh, from an inspection manual. Um, of course, exterior inspection, foundations, roofs, windows, doors, uh, landscaping and grading, gutters, downspouts, all of those are normal things that you would expect to uh, find within your inspection process. But what I've tried to do is take it one step further and provide a base overall understanding of what you can encounter from beginning to end. Um, so here we are at the very first chapter. Uh, this is the introduction. Um, one of the most important things, basically the first thing that we would hear from customers of why didn't my inspector catch this? Um, some, a lot of things are hidden, you know, and you have to look for clues that show you, you know, something is going on, or it actually may be on your inspection report but it's, it's kind of taken lightly. Um, if you don't have a water-based focus, you can have a line item on your inspection report that says, you know, have a qualified contractor check foundation cracks. Um, so it's listed on there, but you don't understand the actual importance of having a contractor check your foundation for cracks uh, that are noticed and documented sometimes. So let's start this off. We're going to we're going to take this, you know, um, at a pace where you guys can kind of keep up with it. But a thorough property inspection is crucial for first time property buyers for several reasons. Number one is identifying potential issues. Um, so you would be able to notice uh, structural damage. Uh, basic systems issues such as plumbing, electrical, you know, you uh, would also at this point be able to look for mold, termite infestations. Um, and just being aware of these issues help you make an informed decision and avoid costly issues later. It also provides you negotiation leverage. So let's say you find a property that has, you know, $30,000 worth of damage when you add it all up. It's best to understand what you're looking for before you purchase this property so that you can then negotiate that cost into the price. So if you find out that there's structural issues on the home, it's best for you to understand what you're looking at before so that you're not left holding the bag on that. Structural issues are expensive to repair. Usually, you know, with minimal structural issues, you're starting somewhere around $10,000. Extensive structural issues can go anywhere from $30,000 and above. We've seen it go up to almost $200,000 on residential and smaller commercial properties. So that's a wide range. You definitely want to understand, you know, what you're getting into and what to look for. Um, financial planning is also very big. Um, so a detailed property inspection provides insight to the home's condition and potential repair or maintenance costs. This is very important to consider the entire package, not just what your mortgage is, um, going to be, you know, and if you're purchasing it as an investment property, what your uh, return is going to be on a monthly basis after purchase and uh, you receiving the rent, um, you know, from the property. There's a lot more that needs to be considered. Um, you know, some areas have to pay for their own trash disposal. Um, you know, there may be grading issues on the property, which we'll get into later, but it's a lot more to be considered. So these points are listed here so that they're top of mind and you're not just looking in a linear fashion of how much is the property, how much are the taxes, what's my monthly payment, and then that's your only cost, that's your only concern. There are a lot more concerns that need to be considered. 
Um, also, a big one is insurance and mortgage approval. Some insurance companies and mortgage lenders may require a satisfactory property inspection before providing coverage or approving a loan. So um, during COVID, there were uh, a lot of foregone inspections, um, you know, due to people not interacting with each other. So you can't have, you couldn't have an inspector come out. Now we're actually seeing that sometimes in busy markets, uh, real estate markets, people are still waiving inspections. And this is very dangerous uh, to the property buyer because it's very easy to put up some drywall, slap a coat of paint on it, and you'll never know what's hiding behind that wall. Um, but a property inspector would be able to look at it and see, you know, or, or surmise, why is this new here, but everything else looks, you know, like dated or there are certain key factors you just want to be aware of, you know, to look at. And sometimes they make themselves available through a normal property inspection. So you never want to skip that um, to make sure that you can attain insurance and mortgage approval. Um, also, if you're looking at it as a long term investment, um, a well-maintained property is more likely to appreciate over time. A thorough inspection will help you identify areas that need attention and allow you to make necessary improvements. So this is for like the long game. Um, you know, you want to make sure that there's not huge maintenance issues that need to be taken care of straight out the gate. Um, you know, you want to make sure that you purchase a property that is well maintained. And if not, that you're aware of all of the issues and once again, negotiate that into the cost of the property. Um, it also brings peace of mind. Um, so when you have a comprehensive property inspection, you can go to sleep at night knowing that you did as much as you can do to make sure that you have a proper parcel of land or, uh, you know, proper home that can be, uh, you know, resided in or rented out. So these are tips for conducting a property inspection. This is kind of where it starts getting good. And these are basically bullet points. Some of these things you may be aware of, but a majority of these things are normally overlooked because um, it, it's a lot to be considered when you're purchasing a new home. Um, so you want to hire a qualified inspector. So you want to make sure that this inspector has a solid reputation in his or her industry. You want to check their credentials, read reviews and ask for recommendations um, from friends, family or your real estate agent. Um, sometimes real estate agents work with a particular, uh, home inspector and not to say anything is wrong with that. I routinely work with real estate agents, um, you know, and they refer me to, uh, you know, get water-based inspections done when, when they notice an issue. Um, but do your own due diligence. Don't just rely on anyone's recommendation, basically. You also do not want to be, uh, you want to be present during the inspection process so that <clears throat> you have firsthand knowledge about what's going on in this potential property. You know, a lot of properties are hundreds of thousands of dollars, a hundred thousand or more. Um, of course, there are a lot of properties that are less expensive than that. But I say that uh, to speak of the fact of you're making a large uh, purchase and you just want to make sure that you cover as many bases as possible. So sometimes an inspection can go half the time that it would if you if you're not present, because it's just a quick walk through, check off a few things and you keep it moving. If you're there, you're more than likely going to receive a higher level of an inspection, if not only for the fact that you can ask questions. Um, and provide yourself an understanding of what exactly is going on in this process. Um, you want to prepare a checklist. This is very important, um, you know, to have an understanding of important areas before you even walk through. So if you did a walkthrough, as, as you probably should have, with like a real estate agent, and uh, at that point, you guys didn't involve an inspector. If you've already come through the property and certain things are catching your eye that doesn't look right, maybe you see some bubbling, uh, 
wall surfaces, you see paint peeling or discoloration or looks like something's going on with the roof because you're seeing brown drip marks in a, in a ceiling in the top floor. You know, these are things that you're going to want to mention when the actual inspector gets there so that he can uh, he or she can have a focus in these areas and provide question answers for your questions. Um, prioritize repairs and improvements. So once you go through and you have this inspection report, you're usually it's listed on the inspection report which areas are the most areas, the highest areas of concern. Um, some inspectors color code their inspection reports. So it's just like, a, you know, a stop, a stoplight. Um, if, if you see red, that means that this is a priority. It's critical to get this done immediately. Um, there's something going on here that could cause other issues. If you see a yellow, that means that it needs to be done it's not of highest priority, but still needs to be taken care of. If you see a green, then more than likely it's just an, like an honorable mention. The, these things are either good to go or, you know, something very minor needs to happen there. Nothing of major concern, nothing that needs to be done immediately. Just kind of keep it on top of mind. Um, once again, you use the report for negotiation. So after you go through the inspection process, your inspector hands over your report. You want to use this information. That is actually, now that turns into a discount for your property. So this isn't just information um, that's useful to you. This is what you go back and after you understand the pricing that's involved to take care of an issue you know, whatever you whatever is noticed on the property, then that's your time to use this to negotiate a better price and to get, you know, the current owner in so that you're not left holding a bag and, you know, taking care of all these expensive repairs after the fact. You definitely want to negotiate this into the deal. So I've seen things where I've seen instances where, uh, let's say, you know, there's a common number for the, the value of home we usually work on is like 500,000 and above. It's very easy to find about 40, 40,000, 30 to $40,000 worth of work that needs to be done. Um, so I've seen things from the, the current owner will take full responsibility, repair all of these things because it is enough money in the deal for them to do so with appreciation values. Um, you know, they might not mind spending 30, 40,000 to close on a deal. Um, but more times than, than none, I see um, an even split. So something that you would be left holding the bag on for about 40,000, usually they'll agree to split it right down the middle with you, um, you know, 20,000 a piece. If you're playing hardball and it looks like you're going to walk away, you may be, at, be able to get a way better deal. So always keep that in mind that your inspection agreements, you want to use those to negotiate with. Um, you also want to plan for future maintenance. So uh, once again, anything that's um, red would be critical, uh, needs to be done highest priority immediately. Um, if you're looking at anything in the yellow and in the green, those are usually like future maintenance, um, especially the green. Um, you know, anything that's low priority would be considered preventive maintenance, future maintenance. Um, so you definitely want to understand the cost associated with that so that, you know, if these things are adding up, you can also use that to negotiate. Um, you always want to keep your reports for future references. You want to maintain excellent records. So whatever documents are associated with the home, you want to keep all those records readily available. <clears throat> all right. So here we are at the next chapter, and this is focusing on roof. Uh, so we do plenty of roof assessments. Um, you know, it's very common to have some type of slight 
you know, roofing issue, whether it's not the main roof itself and that's in good condition, um, the edge that surrounds the roof, that perimeter, um, drip edge usually, um, or where it transitions to any other building materials, sometimes that fails and water is allowed to get into that space and cause some type of issue. So you always want to be mindful to get a good roof inspection. So um, assessing a roof condition um, includes evaluating the overall condition of the roof, including the quality of materials, installation, and workmanship. So this will give you some indication of when the roof needs to be replaced. Is it good for another year or two? Is it good for another 10 years? Is it a new roof? Also, what warranty is on the roof? You have to ask the homeowner, the current owner, do you have the records? That's why it's good for you to keep records because you could be in that same position one day. Um, but find out if uh, records have been man maintained, what you're really going to be looking for is if this roof has a warranty. Um, and if the warranty is transferable over to you, uh, just because this owner is leaving, does that nullify the warranty? Do you still have it? Is it in place? Um, what's exactly covered? Is it a full warranty? Um, the other thing you want to look out for with warranties is uh, sometimes if you attach anything to the roof or you make any kind of alteration or repair and you call out your own, let's say, roofer, um, you know, to do just a, a quick repair or caulking or anything, sometimes anything that you do to a roof uh, nullifies the warranty that you have. And when the, um, the servicing contractor comes out to take a look and finds these things, they're going to let you know very fast that your, your warranty is canceled. They're no longer responsible for your roof. So always make sure that you understand what's included in your roof warranty if you have one. Um, so the other thing major, um, especially in my field of expertise, identifying leaks and damage um, so roof inspections can also identify existing or potential leaks, water damage. Um, you know, we'll be looking for such things as missing <coughs> or cracked uh, tiles or curling shingles, damage flashing. These are all normal wear and tear things, but all can lead to interior water incursion, uh, which can further cause other issues. Um, maybe causing the actual sheathing that the shingles are attached to to need replacement if water's been coming in for a while. Um, it also can cause mold within the attic or the ceiling cavity. And it can also, if it's dripping enough, can get down to that drywall or insulation store in there and just cause other issues for you. Um, so you definitely want to do a good inspection on the roof. Um, estimating the remaining lifespan, um, this is something that, you know, a normal roof inspection would cover. Um, just letting you know how much wear and tear is on the roof and how long it looks like it'll be until you need to replace the roof. That's very important information. Roofs are very expensive. Uh, of course, it depends on your square footage. Um, you know, but the average small area roof, let's say, you know, six square, uh, 600, you know, square feet basically would cost you, you know, somewhere ab about eight, nine, you know, seven, eight, nine thousand dollars, something like that. Um, if you're getting like an asphalt shingle, um, you know, and then it goes up from there for longer lasting roofs, like rubber roofs, if you, if you have a flat roof. Um, so you definitely want to check that. Also, the other issue could be energy efficiency. Um, you want to make sure that the roof is well insulated, well ventilated, um, because this can significantly impact the home's energy efficiency. Um, insurance and mortgage approval. Um, sometimes it requires a roof inspection before providing that coverage. So that's another reason that you're definitely going to want to uh, make sure that you're, you're getting that. Um, once again, negotiation leverage, if you find anything 
going on with the roof that you can include and um, kind of split the cost with the current owner. Um, protecting your investment, a well-maintained roof is essential to protect your overall property. So if you have water coming in, as I just explained, it can cause a lot more issues, um, but this will protect your investment. And if you do this, of course, it's going to provide you peace of mind. One of the big ones uh, that we do a lot of is foundations. Um, so foundations are one of the biggest causes to mold in a property, uh, watering your basement. If you have a finished basement, it can wreak havoc, getting water behind finished areas. So structural integrity is the biggest thing. That's the high ticket item, uh, especially like if you have a stone or brick foundation or something. Um, it basically supports the entire home. The entire home is sitting on the foundation. So that's why it's, it's extremely important uh, for the structural integrity of the home. Um, preventing costly repairs. Foundation repairs are, as I said, very expensive. So it just prevents you having to do a lot of work. If you get this inspection and, um, you know, you see that it's in disrepair, that's a high ticket item. So you're going to want to negotiate that in to get you that price lower on the home. Um, water intrusion. This is this is definitely where our expertise comes into play. Um, we make routine foundation inspections for water intrusion on a daily basis. Um, as I said before, th this is the point where it can cause major issues, mold, water damage, all that stuff. So basically with water intrusion, uh, water, after it hits the side substrate of your property, of course, it, gravity is going to drop that to the lowest level. The lowest level is your foundation. So if it's not sealed properly, it's just allowing water to channel directly in, and you do not want that. All right, and then pest infestation. So usually the foundation is an unfinished area, and um, it's kind of hidden away normally. And um, it's always good to have a, you know, basically check the foundation to make sure that pests aren't going in and out. One thing I'd like to make as a side note, if you see ant infestation, silverfish or potato bug infestations, along with, you know, a few other silverfish and all those kind of things, millipedes, centipedes, these are all pests who uh, dwell in wet surroundings. So if you see a colony of ants entering and exiting while you're inspecting the exterior of the property, it's because there are some type of moisture issues. So that's just a quick tip. Um, resale value. So of course, if your foundation isn't well maintained and you're not the one to catch it and the next people catch it and they do um, understand the value of having a foundation inspection, you're going to be once again left holding the bag of making repairs or a lot of people are going to pass on the property if the foundation repairs aren't made or if some concession isn't made. Once again, mortgage and insurance considerations. Um, sometimes you will not be able to get a loan if a foundation has some type of structural issues. Uh, banks won't touch it. Mortgage companies won't touch it. Once again, negotiation leverage, planning for future maintenance and peace of mind. All right, so here we are at siding and exterior walls, and this is going to be our final chapter for this video. Um, a siding and exterior wall inspection is crucial for first time property buyers for several reasons. Um, number one is aesthetic appeal. Um, so just the curb appeal, if you're going to resell this property, curb appeal is one of the biggest things. Um, that people consider when purchasing a property. So if it's aesthetically pleasing, you increase uh, your opportunity to sell this property and for people to want to purchase it. Um, once again, structural integrity. <clears throat> this is an extension of the foundation issues that we were talking about. If you have issues on your exterior walls, um, then very more than likely you're having some type of foundation issues because the walls sit on the foundation. 
So um, you definitely want to make sure that the walls are inspected, um, especially if you notice something at the base. It can cause the same issues that we discussed on the foundation uh, inspection. Once again, energy efficiency, pest prevention, you know, resale value, maintenance and repair planning, <clears throat> all the same issues that we discussed on foundation. So um, in our next video, we're going to be discussing windows and doors. Um, so I hope you guys return so that you can continue. We're going to go through this entire book. Um, the book is for sale at DIYMoldPros.com. So um, if you guys are in a position where you're about to go to settlement and you need this so that you don't you could cover all bases and don't forget anything, go to DIY mold pros with an S dot com and you'll be able to purchase this book. But we're going to go through chapter by chapter over the next few weeks. And um, I'm going to be giving out these gems so that you guys, uh, you know, are not getting getting caught with purchasing properties like I hear so many nightmare stories and scenarios from our customers. I hope this information was uh, valuable to you and um, we'll see you on the next one. Josh Kent, Moisture Master Pros.